Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel. I am so glad you're here. Today we are going to do some foiling and, st and or stenciling cards featuring brand new products from the Pink Fresh Studio September 2022 release. So many good holiday products, you guys. I'm so excited about these. So let's start with our foiling first, and then we'll kind of work on some stenciling elements and then work on or go on to our backgrounds and finish up, put it all together. Um, I'm gonna be working on both cards simultaneously. That's just kind of how it worked out today. So um, we're gonna be doing foiled elements first, starting with the Show Stopping Merry and Bright Hot Foil Plate. And there is a coordinating die for this. It does die cut nice and close. This is an amazing hot foil plate. I love, love, love this one. I am going to foil it with my favorite Crimson Stars foil from Spellbinders. I'm using the Glimmer hot foil system today. As always, to do my foiling, I am foiling on Hammer Mill cardstock. This is a recommended cardstock, recommended by Pink Fresh, actually, um, and the results are amazing. So there is my foiled Merry and Bright. Next, we are going to foil the snowflakes. So this is four snowflakes. I am going to foil these with some prism foil from Spellbinders on the Hammer Mill cardstock. And these are gonna be beautiful, delicate prism colors. I will take the dies off camera and die cut both the snowflakes and the merry and bright because they have coordinating dies, which is so handy. And I'm going to set those aside for future use on our cards. Next, I am going to take the new stencil set. This is the Festive Leaves. Oh my goodness, this is a four piece set. And we are going to use olive and evergreen for the greenery part first before we use Berrylicious and Candied Apple Pink Fresh Studio inks. I'm using kind of just a small blending brush to ink up my stencil. I used a much bigger piece of cardstock than I needed. Um, but I love this. You're gonna end up with a lot of greenery. I do use a lot of greenery on the Marion Bright card, but I do have some leftover pieces that could be used for another card, um, any other kind of design. But absolutely stunning. I love this. I love the no-line look of this, and I think it's gonna pair really, really beautiful with Marion Bright. The Pink Fresh Studio stencils are numbered at the top, which makes it super easy to know which one comes in which order, which I appreciate. Here we're going to line up stencil number two, and you'll just see I'm kind of sh very, very gently shifting and moving that to get it exactly where it needs to go. And then we're going to take our evergreen ink, which is going to be our darker green here, and we're going to add in our layering. And in some instances, some of the pieces are just going to be the evergreen color. And I like to just kind of work my way from the top down to the bottom. I really love uh, the designs that kind of have half one color and half the other, the leaves. I think they're really pretty. This is gonna work for all kinds of different holiday cards. For our next stencil, which is going to be the main layer of the berries, I am going to use Berrylicious ink. So let's move our stencil out of the way. I am using the Tonic Magnetic Matte which is very helpful with these stencils, helps keep them right where they go. So here I'm gonna line up the berries and I'm going to ink up with Berrylicious. And then we will go ahead and ink up the rest of the berries with Candy Apple. Oh, 
Oh my goodness, how beautiful is this? So it's going to be like some additional berries and some highlights. I don't know that the highlights show up that great, but it it's totally fine. Or the shading, not necessarily the highlights. Then I'm going to take the coordinating die for the festive leaves and I am going to die cut all of these. This is one single die, which makes it so awesome because one pass in the machine and you get all of these little parts and pieces. No lining up all the individual different leaves. So brilliant. I absolutely love this. You guys will have to let me know in the comments if you love the dies that die cut all of the little parts and pieces like I do because it makes it so, so stinking easy. I'm actually going to go back to a previously released product that is a big, big favorite of mine, the Diamond Plaid Stencils, to build our background for our first card. This is going to be the Merry and Bright background. And I'm going to use some fresh pear ink for both stencils in this plaid set. So I'm going to go over the whole thing with fresh pear first. And I purposely picked a lighter green shade than the the greenery that we just stenciled because I want my Merry and Bright it's foiled, it's gonna pop, but I wanted something it's gonna pop off of and I don't want my greenery to, to be too similar, I suppose, to the background. So I picked something a little bit lighter, but still within that definite traditional red and green color combination. Then I'm gonna take the second stencil and I'm going to put it in place and go ahead and go the other way, or not, I guess some of it goes the other way, but it adds the rest of the detail. If you love creating plaid backgrounds, this is my all time favorite. I absolutely love it so much. And there, I'm just gonna finish stenciling that up. It doesn't have to be super perfect. In fact, I like it a little less perfect. I did trim off about an eighth of an inch on two sides. It doesn't make it a lot, lot smaller, but um, helps it just a little bit. So then for my other background, I'm actually gonna use another brand new product from this release. This is the snowflakes background, and these snowflakes are so beautiful and detailed. I do believe there is a coordinating die. I don't have the die, but I think you can die cut these snowflakes if you would like as well. But I think they make a gorgeous background. Oh my goodness, I love it. So I am going to stamp these on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel of smooth white cardstock using clear embossing ink and heat embossing with white embossing powder. We're going to do embossed resist with the Berrylicious and Candied Apple Pink Fresh Studio inks. And then I'm gonna go around the edges of the panel with the Pink Fresh Studio Black Licorice ink to give it kind of a dark, moody holiday feel. I absolutely love this red color combination, and this is gonna be a red-white card with snowflakes. We're gonna be popping those foiled snowflakes right on top of this design. The small size, scale, and delicate detail of these snowflakes is very, very pretty. I think you will love this background and love this stamp. It is a fantastic addition for all the snowflake lovers out there. And I made a huge mess with my embossing powder that I need to clean up. I'm just using a scrap piece of paper to protect my work surface so I don't have to clean it up. I actually just dug this out of the trash. <laughs> and I am going to ink my panel with Berrylicious in the center and Candied Apple around the edges with um, Licorice around the very edges. Now I accidentally got a huge smudge there on my panel with my ink blending tool, uh, but I think we can disguise it enough in the finished card. I had several smudges. 
needed to tap off some of that ink before I took it to my paper a little bit more. But I made it work. I'm a big fan of always making it work. Okay, then I am going to grab my licorice. It's beautiful like that, but I really, really love the moodiness that a little black around the edges brings into a design. Um, I don't know what it is, but I've just been really loving it again lately, not just for you know, spooky Halloween or anything like that, but for anything. Just kind of gives it a little bit more of a grungy, moody feel, and I am here for it. So I'm just gonna put a little of that licorice there, and then I will go ahead and take a dry microfiber cloth, and I want to buff pretty firmly the, any of that ink sitting on top of our white snowflakes. And there are some big smudges there, but I think we can hide them with our snowflakes and our sentiments. And that looks pretty good. So now I have my backgrounds, I have my elements, I need to finish getting the rest of my greetings and put it all together. So I'm gonna kind of play around with placement for my snowflakes. And I decided to use three of my white snowflakes of the four. We can save the other one for another project even make a great gift tag if you punch a little hole in it. So simple, simple gift tags. And I am gonna be using greetings today from the Ornaments stamp set for both cards. So for my Merry and Bright, I decided I wanted a little phrase underneath the bottom edge. Um, I did go ahead and attach Merry and Bright in the greetings with foam adhesive and I put tons of little foam adhesive squares all over the back. You'll notice that I left the greenery back behind the greeting so that I added the foam adhesive behind those areas as well so it was popped up. And I'm gonna kind of play around with some of the rest of the greenery I wanna to add to this. I think in addition to the three pieces that I layered with Marion Bright, I'm adding three additional greenery pieces to my background and then I'm going to trim off anything that hangs off of the edge with my scissors. So just the tip of some of the leaves and things. And the Crimson Stars foil, you, how gorgeous is that? It is really showy for a bold foiled greeting like this, which I absolutely love. And then we're just gonna put a couple more little pieces. Try to figure out how I like this the best. I want some of the, the leaves and things to be over the letters and some to be under. I found that to be the most visually pleasing. And then I did glue one element directly to the background. The rest were popped up with foam squares. And then for the sentiment, I opted to stamp it directly onto the card background. Probably could have done this before I attached everything, but I, I was at the time thought I might stamp it into a sentiment strip, but I thought a sentiment strip might cover up a little bit too much of that bottom part of the card of the plaid. And I thought I, I don't I want it to be more of a secondary character here, if you will. And so I am going to stamp that with evergreen ink right underneath the word bright. So let's put this in our misty line up our greeting and I think if we're super careful we can just stamp that right there easy peasy and the green is going to complement the green of the design I like that it's not black I think it just ties in so nicely to everything else oh it's so pretty I absolutely love it. These cards are not similar at all, but I love them equally. I think they're both really, really fun. So for the second card design, I am going to stamp one of the more scripty fonts from the Ornaments stamp set, Peace, Love, and Joy. And then we're also going to stamp the phrase, wishing you a holiday season that is merry and bright. 
on some, I think this is some slate cardstock. It's a dark gray cardstock. The exact one is listed in the description below. Storm Cloud, that's what it is. Um, and I am going to stamp that with clear embossing ink, heat emboss with white embossing powder, and then I'm going to die cut the Peace, Love, and Joy with the coordinating die from the ornaments set, and I'm going to die cut the other phrase with a sentiment label die from Simon Says Stamp to add to our card. And for this, I felt like the dark gray cardstock gave that same moody feel that the licorice ink gave around the edge of the panel. So it's really going to be showy against that, you know, moody red. And then, of course, the beautiful pops of white of the embossed snowflakes and then the silver or prism foiled snowflakes. So we are going to put foam adhesive underneath parts of the sentiment strip. Where it overlaps the snowflake, though, we are not going to put foam adhesive so that it lays correctly. I'm going to kind of be tricky about that. And where this lays across the card, it hides some of the smudges. Thank goodness, <laughs> because those just did not go away. The script sentiment is pretty detailed. I'm going to use my tweezers to hold on to that and I am going to pop that right here above my sentiment strip. And I think it just, I love how it cuts nice and close, but with the white embossing on the dark gray there, it really pops. It's still very easy to read even against a background with those white snowflakes. So pretty, so delicate. I think it works really nice with the beauty of the snowflakes. I'm going to trim off any of the snowflakes hanging off the edge of my panel. I did keep this panel four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I'm going to embellish now, lots of embellishing. These little hearts are more like faceted hearts. They're from Buttons Galore. I've had them forever. I don't know if I have a link to them or not. If I do, I'll add it below. Otherwise, you might check the Buttons Galore website to see if they still carry these or if you can find them. I just collect little bits and bobs wherever and I tend to keep them for years because little embellishments are my favorite and I think they can be used, they're timeless. They can be used all the time. And I am a huge, you guys know this already, I'm a huge fan of hearts um, and stars. And they are things that I reach for time and time again. So I'm using little silver star confetti. And of course I embellish the center of all my snowflakes with one of those little faceted hearts. That heart happened to be the perfect color to go on these cards. And I love how it turned out. Oh my goodness. I did not think, um, this is, sounds bad. I didn't think I was gonna love this card as much as I ended up loving it. And it's just such a beauty. I really was happy with how it turned out. I think it would be so pretty in lots of different colors. And then for the berries, I am just gonna simply kind of highlight them a little bit more with a dimensional pearl. I use these Pretty Pink Posh red pearls all the time, all the time. Uh, these are the cherry red pearls. I have bought multiple bags of these because I have used them so many times. And I keep shaking my card because I did drop one of the small pearls and I couldn't find it and then it finally came flying out. And I wanna make sure there's not that many berries on my card so I am going to embellish all of them. And then I will add a few gold little star confetti around my card. Kind of scattered here and there. I think it's going to be just the perfect finishing touch. I will pop each of these panels on a white top fold card base and that is going to finish up my holiday cards featuring the Pink Fresh Studio September 2022 release. The supplies I use to create my cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another video featuring Pink Fresh products that you might be interested in. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my Patreon members, 
If you would like to become a member of Patreon, please click the link in the description below. We would love to see you over there as part of our growing community. October 2022 will mark a full year of Patreon, and I will be doing a big celebration party in October for all Patreon members with a live. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new card making video. Thank you so much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time.